How's it going? I'm Dr. J, and this is an updated Samus guide that will act as a part two to my previous Samus guide. So if I don't mention something here, check out my first Samus guide that'll link in the description. A lot has changed and been optimized since my last guide, and I've learned quite a few new tricks that I wanted to share with you guys. First off, the main difference in terms of patches is that Samus and Dark Samus's power missile and bombs have both been buffed slightly, which actually makes a pretty significant difference. Also, here's an updated slash corrected rundown of the differences between Samus and Dark Samus. Dark Samus's fire-like attacks are electric instead of fire. Dark Samus has faster forward and back rolls, but she's more vulnerable to attack afterwards. And Dark Samus's projectiles shoot slightly lower to the ground. Samus's F smash has slightly farther range but Dark Samus's up smash hits lower grounded opponents more consistently. Also, they have slightly different animations and different shield sizes, which sort of makes a difference, I guess. I'm sure some of you are going to play Samus no matter what, so you don't need convincing, but let me explain why I think Samus fits pretty well into the current competitive meta, despite it being mainly rushdown oriented. A character's competitive value is often judged based on how common different types of opponents are. An easy way to explain this would be like picking a starter in Pokemon. Let's say that it's a widely known fact that a fire Pokemon is the best. Well, if you plan on battling other people, you may decide to pick the fire starter because it gives you an advantage over most opponents, but as long as the fire starter isn't clearly always better and the game is properly balanced, picking a water Pokemon to beat the supposed top tier fire mons is probably the way to go. In Smash, you could just pick Wolf or Peach or Pikachu because they're really good and everyone's talking about them, but the beauty of an evolving meta is that characters that do well against those top tier characters are better overall considering how often people play top tiers. So Samus doesn't do great against the Spaces, Pikachu, or Pichu, but she does pretty darn well in a few key matchups, notably Peach, Wario, Ike, Link, Shulk, and all of the heavies, and has relatively fair matchups against other important characters including Young Link, Mega Man, Corrin, and Snake, to name a few. While she does pretty well overall, Samus is a character that struggles a lot in certain situations, but always has the tools necessary to turn the table on your opponent. Finally, you should play Samus because it will simply make you better at the game. While clean inputs and precise timing is key in all fighting games with all characters, at its core, Smash is a game about controlling space and deceiving your opponent into going into space you control. If you're good enough at these fundamentals of the game, then you can thrive in any matchup. Samus has a lot of unique tricks and tech at her disposal, but at the core, Samus players win by outsmarting your opponent rather than directly overwhelming them. Let me talk about zoning in fighting games, because there are a lot of negative stigmas about it that lead to misunderstanding. Proper zoning is safely controlling a space in order to limit your opponent's options. Balanced zoners can only cover a certain amount of space at a time and thus focus on a bait and punish style of play. Samus shouldn't be just running away to spam projectiles, she should primarily be using her missiles as threats that cause your opponent to be more predictable, to weaken shields, and to allow time to charge your neutral beam. One of her most useful zoning tools is her Zare. It's pretty hard to time against smaller grounded opponents, and it will take some getting used to, but it catches people in the air very well. It cancels quickly when you hit the ground, but you can't fastball and use it at the same time, so you have to either time it well as you fall in order to combo from it, or retreat after hitting it if you're too close to them. For combos, you've got your standard 1-2s like bomb into anything or any read into a charge shot punish, but your longer combos will usually come from up air, down air, and down throw. Up air is extremely fast, does good damage, and can be followed up into an up B, another up air, a down air, or a fair depending on your opponent's DI. Up air alone or up air into up B are extremely effective at KOing off the top at almost any percent. Stages like Battlefield, Town and City, Kalos, and Pokemon Stadium all work quite well with her due to this and her zoning potential. Anyway, practice falling up air, up air out of shield, and getting a double jump aerial out of short hop up air. As with many of her other moves, up air out of down throw connects depending on DI and percent. Down air functions similarly to Captain Falcon's as it's primarily used for starting combos and finishing stocks off stage. Samus's off stage game is really good and I'll cover that in a minute, but similarly to her up tilt, down air won't combo at very high percents and it's got a delayed startup, but both can be followed up with an up air or an up B. Down throw can combo or string into nair, fair, back air, up air, or zare depending on percent and DI. The safest but often least rewarding follow up to down throw is zare. 
Up throw is a good knockout tool on light characters, but anything medium weight or above can survive it for a very long time. Around 160% is usually good for medium characters. Forward throw and back throw are pretty situational, but they can be used as a lead into charge shot for repositioning your opponent or as a lead into an edge guard. Her fair is good for catching jumping opponents and lasts long enough that you can't air dodge through it. I like to use it after firing a charge shot or missile because opponents often jump to avoid projectiles. Aside from catching jumping opponents though, it's great for edge guarding and extending combos. Samus has one of the best defense and offstage games out of any character, but she's extremely vulnerable to being juggled once you make a mistake. As such, being offstage is not nearly as bad of a position as being above your opponent in a lot of matchups. She has great ways of getting back on stage. Her up B, up air, Zer, and tilts are her greatest defensive tools, both on stage and off stage. On the ground, her tilts are her best close range tool, particularly F and down tilt. They're good for spacing or for punishing things that your other moves wouldn't have time to land. Down tilt is great for getting a knockout or for covering the ledge. Up tilt is even better at covering the ledge, and F tilt can lead into a tech chase followed up with a dash attack, grab, or charge shot. Up B is extremely good on Samus as a get off me tool, a knockout move, and even as an anti-air mix up. It combos out of a lot of things and it's extremely fast out of shield. If you miss it though, you'll be above your opponent which is a very bad place to be as Samus. Bombs are a very nice close range zoning tool that lead into a ton of things. It's really good for ledge trapping or two framing and you can do a tricky knockout combo with the ledge with bombed down air spike. I talked about recovering and stalling using bombs in my last Samus video. But once you start getting more comfortable with Samus, you should practice getting bomb follow-ups. Some final random notes would be to catch double jump landings with a charge shot or grab, and to practice reversing, turning around, and wave bouncing your charge shot. I also like using a run-up pivot F-tilt for a surprise approach because of how much priority it has, and for retreating, a reverse aerial rush Zare is pretty good. Anyway, that's all for now. If you haven't already, check out my previous Samus guide or my guide on stage picking. And if you like this video, then subscribe for more Samus tips and Smash content. Peace.